Do y'all remember when we had the worst defense in the NFL through the first nine games of the NFL season? Because, to be quite honest with you, I don't. What is going on, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Steezy A. Smith, back in the building. I know, I know. It's been a while, and last time we were talking about the Seattle Seahawks, we were exposing the Seattle Seahawks. But today, I want to talk about the transformation of that Seattle Seahawks defense. And referring back to the question that I asked earlier, yeah, I'm talking about the defense that was allowing the most yards in the NFL at over 455 yards a game. I'm talking about a defense that was allowing the most passing yards per game at over 360. Yes, I'm talking about that defense that was second to last in the NFL at over 30 points per game allowed through the first nine games of the NFL season. And today, we're here to talk about the transformation of that very same and a much maligned defense. If you guys haven't already, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe and tell that friend to tell his mom to subscribe and his mom's sister to subscribe. Tell everybody you know to subscribe and be sure to follow us on Instagram as well for more content as we don't upload as much on YouTube, but on Instagram, if you can't get enough of Steezy A. Smith content, be sure to follow us on there. Shout out to, to my big bro and to my big sister for, for this real dope Seahawks shirt. Um, I hope I'm making you guys proud. If you haven't already, please be sure to tap in with some Team Steezy merch. Link will be down in, this, in the description below. The first person to comment actually gets free merch on us. And be sure to hit us up on Instagram. Be sure to hit us up on all socials. Shoot us a DM if you want a little promo code. Uh, we've just lowered all the prices over at the Team Steezy store. So be sure to tap in and... You know, I know the holiday season is, is ending, but I'm still feeling real generous. We're feeling real generous over here at Team Steezy. So once again, first person to comment gets free merch on us. I just want to give you guys a little life update. A couple weeks from now, we're actually moving into a new place. We'll have a new studio, a new studio is set up. And I know that we've been a little slow in terms of putting out content out there, but I promise you, as soon as we move into our new studio, we'll have a new look. Uh, we'll be ramping up production. And so I can't wait. Hope you guys can't wait either. And Without further ado, I hate to, to hold this any longer. Let's hop right into the video, y'all. Back to that question that I asked you guys earlier. Do you guys remember that defense? That was the worst in football through nine weeks of the NFL season. And remember when I answered no? The reason why is because through the, through the last seven games of the NFL season, the Seattle Seahawks are number one. Number one. That's right. The Seattle Seahawks are number one, and that is not a typo. The Seahawks are number one in the NFL in scoring defense as they're only allowing 15 points per game in their last seven games. They're tied for the most in the NFL in sacks with 24 in their last seven games. The Seahawks are third in total defense at just about 302 yards allowed per game. They're sixth in pass defense at just over 203 yards per game. They're fifth in opponent pass rating at 78.3. They're also third in opponent yards per play at 4.6 yards per play. And look, the reason why the team was so bad on defense through the first eight to nine games of the season was not only because there was a condensed offseason, was not only because Jamal Adams, the best safety in football, missed four games, was not just because one of our starting defensive ends, Benson Mayo, missed four games, and not just because one of our starting corners and Shaquille Griffin missing two games, but also because this team had no time to establish any chemistry whatsoever. And it might be hard to believe, especially because we were allowing over 30 points a game for half of the season, but this defense could very well be the number one defense in the NFL today. And look, I understand. We played some very weak and, and mediocre teams. We're talking about the Philadelphia Eagles with Carson Wentz before Jalen Hurts took over. We're talking about an Arizona Cardinals team that had an injured and a hobbled Kyler Murray. We're talking about a Colt McCoy-led Giants team. And we're talking about the Washington football team who just released their quarterback that played against the Seahawks and Dwayne Haskins. Yes. Yes, I understand all that, but through the first eight to nine games of the season, everybody was pointing out how we had no competition. We were playing against no competition. And actually, real quick, I forgot to even bring up the Jets. The New York Jets were crying out loud. The Jets are a lot better than what they were through the first half of the season. And once again, going back to what I was saying earlier, a lot of y'all were saying that we played no competition through the first eight to nine games of the season. And if that's the case, if we're, still if we're still not playing any competition now, then why is it that we're now only allowing 15 points a game compared to the 30 that we were allowing through the first eight weeks? That game against the Buffalo Bills back in week nine, where we allowed over 40 points, 44 to be exact, the most in the peak hero era. That game definitely set the tone for, what, for the defense that we have seen now. And in all honesty, I'm really not surprised. We had the personnel to show 
we've, what we've accomplished so far, and I know that we haven't accomplished anything. That defense hasn't accomplished anything. But to jump from dead last to first in the NFL in scoring defense on defense alone is a significant achievement in and of itself. And hats off to the Seahawks Seahawks defense. They figured it out. They've turned a weakness into a strength. And while the offense has been in a slump the last month or so, the defense has really picked it up. And Y'all know what they say, defense wins championships, and that is what the Seattle Seahawks have turned into a strength, their defense. And as, as I was saying earlier, I'm honestly not even surprised. This team had the personnel to do it from the start, starting with the best safety in football, Jamal Adams, who's been a huge part of what the Seahawks have done on defense and the turnaround that the Seahawks have had on defense. But not all the credit goes to Jamal Adams and his nine and a half sacks, which leads the team this year by a pretty wide margin. And compared to last year when our leading sack getter, no disrespect to Rasheem Green had four and a half. This dude, Jamal Adams has set the record for the most sacks by a defensive back in NFL history. And it's still a game to go. He has a chance to hit double digits for the first time by a defensive back. And he has nine and a half. But we also got to look at the fact that Carlos Dunlap, Ever since he arrived in Seattle, he has five sacks for us in about, what, seven or eight games played, and two of those have resulted in game-clinching, game-icing sacks. Our pass rush has been reinvigorated in the last seven games. Like, as I mentioned earlier, we're first. We're tied for first in the NFL in sacks. We're now top six in the NFL in sacks when we were dead last, or at least second to last, before that game against the Buffalo Bills. Uh, last year, we were second to last in the entire NFL with 28 sacks, and now we have 24 in seven games. That has not been a coincidence. Obviously, with Carlos Dunlap arriving, Jamal Adams' is emergence, he wasn't healthy through the first eight games. He missed four of those games. And it's hard to play defense in the NFL when your front four can't get any pressure. Before the arrival of Carlos Dunlap, we weren't getting any pressure whatsoever on the front four or with the front four. And that puts so much pressure on the DBs. That puts so much pressure on the secondary. And that puts so much pressure on the linebackers. Now, with, with the front four showing that they're capable and that they're competent of getting after the quarterback now there isn't as much pressure on the secondary there isn't as much pressure on the linebackers KJ Wright's able to do his Dougie the emergence of DJ Reed I forgot to even mention DJ Reed he hasn't been a superstar for us but he's been rock solid and to be quite honest with you I don't think anyone has missed Quentin Dunbar with the way that DJ Reed has been playing and I get it there are times when we still fail to get off the field on third down but this defense is elite make no mistake about it and if that wasn't the case then why are we only allowing 15 points a game? For example, the Jets, we beat them by 37, 40 to three. The very next week, they beat the LA Rams. That's why your guys' LA Rams, who everybody was harking on to be the best team in the NFC West, who some people were saying were the Super Bowl contenders in the NFC, I think not. I think that team is absolutely toast. That team is gonna be missing Jared Goff this coming Sunday against the Arizona Cardinals in what is a must win game for both those teams. But getting back on topic, once again, the transformation of this defense has been absolutely phenomenal. I actually kind of called it. And shout out to, to a good friend of mine, Big Bro, Brian Abker, of, formerly of KJR Sports. He was speaking on this on North Cam's roundtable early on in the year about how he was not worried at all about the Seattle Seahawks defense. And in time, that defense will get a lot better. So shout out to you, Big Bro. Uh, you called it. Shoot, I called it. Going into the playoffs, this defense will be our calling card. This defense will be our bread and butter. And for Pete Carroll, that ha that's been his bread and butter his entire career. His entire coaching career has been built upon defense. I understand the, the offense has been in a slump lately, but seeing that we saw Russ cook through the first five games of the season or the first five, six games, whatever it was, we know that they're capable of competing in shootouts with opposing teams, of putting up astronomical numbers. Now, if the defense holds up, I think that's a whole nother story, and I think that's a major reason why we're still Super Bowl contenders in the NFL this season. We went from essentially dead last to first. Yes, while this defense isn't perfect, we still need to get off the field on third down more often than we should, and we still have a few blown coverages that probably shouldn't happen, but as the season continues to wear on, as the playoffs are around the corner, this team will only continue to get better on defense, and I think that's a very scary sight as some of those statistics that I brought up earlier are only bound to get better as the team slowly starts to build even more chemistry. And going into playoff time, I don't think anybody wants any part of the Seahawks Seahawks. If I could attribute any one thing, or at least a few things to the defensive turnaround, it has got to be towards health and the emergence of actual pass rushers. Cause look, early on in the season, as I mentioned earlier, Jamal Adams missed about four games, and yet this dude still has nine and a half sacks. How? Nine and a half sacks, and he didn't play in four games. I, I, 
that's beyond me. But anyways, one of our starters, one of our starting defensive ends, missed four games himself. Shaquille Griffin has missed four games, obviously our starting cornerback. Quentin Dunbar, uh, the number two cornerback, according to PFF last season, has been in and out of the lineup and who's now been placed on IR and who's out for the rest of the season, including the playoffs. Guys have been in and out of the lineup as the playoffs are around the corner. Our guys on defense are starting to get healthier. Knock on wood. The defensive turnaround, too, is, like I said earlier, the emergence of actual pass rushers. This team, like I said at the very beginning of this video through week seven, still had a single digit sack total on the year with nine through seven weeks. This team is tied for first in the NFL with 24 in the last seven weeks. This team has been on an absolute tear and getting after the quarterback. And to be quite honest with y'all, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Guys can only govern for so long. And when guys are sitting in the pocket, when quarterbacks are sitting in the pocket, with days to throw. I'm talking quarterbacks wanted to set up a lemonade stand, they could. That's how much time quarterbacks had in the pocket to dissect and pick apart a defense. And to be quite honest with y'all, even if we had the best secondary in the NFL, let's say we had the best, two best corners and the two best safeties. Well, actually we have one of them. We have the best safety in football in Jamal Adams. And Quadra Diggs is a pro bowl safety in his own right. But even if we had the best secondary in the NFL, even those guys wouldn't be able to hold up if there's no pass rush in front of them. So. The fact that now we have a pass rush, that has improved things tremendously. Like I said, it takes so much pressure off of the guys on the back end and allows them to do their jobs a lot better. Now, with Carlos Dunlap and Jamal Adams, it goes beyond the stacks. Their arrival and their impact alone has made the guys around them better themselves. The fact that these guys are so good that they make the guys around them better. Let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts about the transformation of the Seattle Seahawks defense, which essentially went from last to first, or first to last, however y'all want to see it. Let me know if I'm tripping. If you guys enjoyed, please be sure to give, give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to comment your thoughts. Be sure to show some love on both Instagram and YouTube. That's going to be it for today, folks. Till next time, and Steezy out.